and I like sweet food too. Thank you, Craig. If you have a sweet tooth, but you're trying to stick to a healthy diet, that can be a challenge, especially this time of year. But nutritionist and author Megan Teltner is here with how you can undiet your favorite treats. So yes, good morning to you. Good morning. The Undiet Cookbook. This is a great concept. Tell us a little bit about what the Undiet is. The Undiet is about breaking the rules that we think we're supposed to follow that are supposed to make us healthy, but don't, right. and instead make us feel deprived and hungry. And not so happy. We uh, we want our sweet treats, we, and we want them to taste good too. Yes. So yes. you've you've accomplished this, but tell us uh, about how you've made it healthy. Yes. So all everything in my book is dairy free and gluten free, which is really helpful for people who are struggling with digestive issues, allergies, and they're becoming more common. Mm -hmm. And also have nut free options. Okay. So I use a couple different gluten free flours as the base for all my desserts. We've got a brown rice flour, a bean flour, sorghum flour. I use arrowroot starch, which helps things stick together. Okay. When you're not using gluten because yeah. gluten is the protein it makes it that chewy. makes things chewy, exactly. And then I use natural sweeteners instead of refined sugar. So maple syrup, I use a lot of honey and coconut sugar. Okay, so you're putting all natural things into your body all and that's always a good thing. Yes. Yes. Do you like to blend your flours? I always use a combination because often with the gluten-free flours and whole grain based flours, they have a very strong taste. Right. So I find that cutting them and doing half and half, so I'll often do half brown rice, half buckwheat often with a little bit of arrowroot is a really good combination yeah. and I offer all the different options in my book as well, a little sort of your own all-purpose gluten-free flour blend that you can make yourself. Right. Because oftentimes with gluten-free foods, they're just filled with starches. Yes. So the gluten-free doesn't make it healthy. But we can use them and make really beautiful whole food ingredients. So we okay. have a chai almond milk. Delicious. Um, it smells amazing. It, it does. It does. And this uses a bunch of antioxidant rich spices. You can also do straight almond milk, which is just blending, you know, one part almonds, four parts water. Mm -hmm. Strain it and you've got your own homemade almond milk. We use that milk in some of the desserts. Okay, delicious. So let's go through some of the desserts. Yes. And you've had time to experiment with this, having struggled with it for 10 years. Yes. So you've really perfected how the these desserts are. The best of the best. The best yes. of the best. 130 of them. Okay, what have you made for us here so this morning? So these are the cinnamon spiked brownies. And the little trick in those is that to make them really moist and gooey, we're using pureed sweet potato. Yeah. Which you would never know it's in there. Sneak the vegetables in. Sneak the vegetables in. And there actually is also a little bit of applesauce, which is nice in gluten-free baking to again keep it moist and chewy. Yum. These are amazing. Okay, this is my jam right here, the yeah. Rice Krispie Square. It's your take. So what have we worked We're with? We're using organic crispy rice cereal and there's some, you can also use uh, puffed quinoa, so you know, choose what One you want. The um, they're held together with almond butter, coconut oil, and uh, raw cacao powder, and yeah. a little bit of honey. And then if you want to do it nut free, use the sun butter. Hello, um, little rice crispy. We like that a lot. Those yes. cookies look amazing. And those are what I call the Sunday night quickie chocolate chip cookies. They're super quick to make. And they're a crispy chocolate chip cookie that's gluten free, dairy free, nut free, all those good things. Delicious. What kind of challenges did you encounter trying to really dial into the best of the best and put them in your book? For me, it was really about making things first and foremost delicious. Mm -hmm. Everything's in there in there is healthy, but I want it to be delicious and I want it to look nice too. Mm -hmm. So sometimes healthy food can look a little bit like slop in a bowl. So oh, right. for me, figuring out what we were gonna put in here, it really had to be delicious, be easy to make, and I also wanted the majority of the green ingredients to be available at most mainstream supermarkets so that it's really accessible, that people aren't having to go all over the place to find the ingredients to make all these good things so they can actually put it into practice as a lifestyle, not as a diet. Yes, that's an important message as well. The Undiet Cookbook, congratulations to you. Thank you. And uh, these look delicious. We're definitely going to want to dig in and